just back from vacation. It's Roland Boyd, and I'm uh, here at the head of 545 Live. We'll be uh, taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly ske scheduled 6 o'clock news as we uh, again launch into BC TV's nightly media roundup. We're going to talk about a week-long Vermont Yankee protest outside the gates of uh, Vermont's lone nuclear plant, talk about some fire department awards, uh, and we'll check in with Mike Merwicki via Skypecast to talk about some programs to engage more women in politics in Vermont. All that and more, and I might even just catch my breath after all this running to get this show together. So uh, stick with us right here on 545 Live. <laughs> Plus the marathon is one of the great events in, in this country. And it is just to see the stretches wheeling away people. It is a real, real tragedy. Uh, and our hearts and prayers go out to all of the families who have been uh, maimed, people who have been maimed or, or killed. It is just a terrible, terrible event. Welcome back to this April 23rd, 2013 edition of 545 Live. Uh, that's footage of Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders reflecting on the tragic bombing at the Boston Marathon last week. This, of course, being our first live broadcast following those events. Uh, so we've come in actually at the, the tail end of a true media frenzy. It was at times hard to glean any real information from that, but uh, according to the latest numbers from the Boston Globe, the attacks, which consisted of two improvised explosive devices concealed in backpacks set to detonate exactly four hours after the start of the race, have claimed the lives of three individuals and injured a, a total of 282 more. Now, the ensuing FBI investigation, which closed down schools, public transit, and much of the greater Boston area, has yielded two, spus two suspects, one of whom was fatally uh, injured while the police were trying to apprehend them, uh, and the other who is now in custody. Uh, you can get true details, full details, uh, in any one of the uh, major media outlets which continue to cover this story above all others. All right, uh, we're going to continue with our own stories, however, and uh, take you through this next 15 minutes. It's a Tuesday, so we'll talk about some new on BCTV things. Uh, we'll touch base with what BCTV producers have been up to making their own video and more. Uh, but uh, we're going to start by talking about the women of the Shut It Down Affinity Group, ages 55 to 92. Uh, they've graced the news and the local media stratosphere with their presence many a time. And this past week... Um, they uh, set out to protest in front of the gates of Vermont Yankee uh, in Vernon uh, every single day. And who was there with them but tireless BCTV volunteer Mar uh, Maria Dominguez to gather footage as well, footage that we've got uh, right here. Let's take a look. We are surrounded by the, by the evils of Vermont Yankee, Yankee. The, the invisible evils, evils of radiation, stored spent fuel rods, leaks of radioactivity, into the air we breathe. You can see footage from that. It's showing this week here on BCTV. Speaking of footage from Maria, we've got uh, plenty more here. It includes the latest Wyndham World Affairs uh, Council lecture. Uh, now this is uh, from a, a piece they put on called What is Islam? Titled, What is Islam? Who is Mohammed? Uh, it was also sponsored by the Brattleboro Interfaith Initiative, uh, and it allowed local residents a chance to come out and ask questions um, of a panel of Muslims currently living in the U.S., uh, among the uh, topics, how women were treated here uh, throughout uh, the last few decades uh, in Islamic culture. Let's take a look at the clip from the panel. We treat our women abhorrently. Maternal mortality rates are exceedingly high. Literacy rates are exceedingly low. Um, and, you know, so we've allowed extremists to sort of flourish within us um, um, and not taking any responsibility for how we as Muslims have gotten ourselves to where we are. You'll be able to see that uh, full Wyndham World Affairs Council lecture next week right here on BCTV Channel 8. All right, uh, moving on, let's talk firefighters. And for that, let's go back into the close-up here. Uh, many of us may have wanted to be fighter fighters when we grew up, uh, back when we were uh, younger. But for those who have actually come to realize that childhood dream, uh, it's a lot less glamorous than it may seem, though no less dangerous. 
Recognizing those who do this work without demanding recognition was the idea behind this week's ceremony, uh, unofficially emceed by Fire Chief Mike Bukasi, who recognized several of Brattleboro's toughest firefighters, including Rick Crespo, who took home the Firefighter of the Year Award. And we've uh, got some video here uh, to take a look at some of the hard work they've been doing. This is actually a, a glimpse of U.S. Rep. Peter Welsh, who uh, talked a little bit about the unbelievable, as he called it, uh, dedication of the uh, Brattleboro Emergency Personnel Group uh, working on the localist of levels here following Tropical Storm Irene. Let's uh, harken back, take a look at what he had to say. It's just amazing how the local response has been uh, so good, and it has to be. Because, you know, in that aftermath, when there's uh, life safety issues, uh, and when there's an opportunity, like in the window of 48 hours, to uh, save a building. All right, uh, moving on. We'll uh, jump into our split screen in just a moment. Hopefully uh, get uh, Wyndham District 4 Rep Mike Merwicki on the line here to uh, get, a, get us a split screen here. But uh, first, let's head back into the, the stories here, queued up with the script. The number of female Democrats operating in politics in America has remained the same for the last five years. That's according to the Women in Politics Institute, where Director Jennifer L. Lawless says, in a field dominated by men, the status quo just isn't good enough. But in states like Vermont, there are plans afoot to up the numbers of uh, women in politics by encouraging women to run for office through programs like former Vermont Governor Madeline Cunion's Emerge Vermont program, and uh, also programs that give girls uh, across the state a look at what it might uh, look like to be involved through mock government structures. Now, uh, hopefully, joining Mike Mirricki will be Jill Kerwinski, who's a rep from the Burlington area, uh, to talk a little bit about these programs. Of course, first I have to get the technology in place here, see if we can uh, get our split screen up and running here. Uh, Mike, Jill, are you... Uh, are you there? Great. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Jill, let's uh, start with you. Talk a little bit about your work with uh, Madeline Kunin here on the Emerge Vermont program and, and what that's about. Governor Madeline Kunin uh, is a huge advocate, um, a very out, outspoken leader on encouraging women to run for office. And she has this great saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's true that even in Vermont we have a great uh, number of women serving in the House and the Senate. We ranked second in the country for the number of women serving, um, but we're still not at half. <laughs> uh, so we still don't have equal representation. And Vermont is only one of, I think, three states now that has not sent a woman to Washington. And in fact, in, in my hometown in Burlington, we've never had a woman elected mayor. So we have a lot of work to do. So um, a group of women uh, spearheaded by Governor Kunin has, think, has been forming in this organization called um, Emerge Vermont, and it's very it's not completely organized yet. It's a group of women who are on a mission um, to get more women to run for office. And so we're starting to uh, talk about how we can do that and what training we could have available and really help to create a mentoring system to help more women run for office. Very good. All right. Uh, Jill Kowinski from Burlington and, of course, Wyndham District 4 Rep. Mike Merwicki. All right. Uh, thanks for checking in. Mike, uh, I'll do a full interview and post it as part of his program, Montpelier Connection, which you can find at brettlebrotv.org. All right. A few more stories here. Moving on with the highest concentration of nonprofits per capita in the country, Wyndham County uh, isn't the easiest place to fundraise for. Uh, but for those of you not sure uh, how to distribute your limited resources for charitable donations, Brattleboro Area Hospice may have another way of thinking about it with the donating of stuff. What stuff? Well, that was the topic of the latest episode of the Brattleboro Area Hospice-centric program Living and Dying, as host Richard Ewald sat down with staff and volunteers from the downtown thrift store Experienced Goods, whose profits uh, directly fund hospice, to talk about some of the product that they've been moving through, thanks to donations from members of the community. There is something to say about, you know, they are just things, but there, there is history and there is emotion behind a lot of things and we, we keep that in mind you know when things come to us we try to treat them with respect and yeah. care and uh, present them in a way that they can go on and, and be appreciated. This will uh, show all this week here on BCTV Channel 8 and you can uh, 
catch a, a glimpse at some of the things. They actually uh, packed this here downtown studio with uh, merchandise from the store. Again, that all benefits hospice. You can find out more about what Brattleboro Area Hospice is up to by looking up the program Living and Dying uh, on our website as well. Speaking of uh, what's showing on BCTV Channel 8, that'll give me a chance to launch into our new on BCTV feature before we uh, ride out uh, on the sunset here. Let's uh, jump into it, talk a little bit about what's coming up here on our channels. We'll start with PTSD, a personal story. This is from uh, Russ Grabiak, who's been uh, getting his hand into video, BCTV volunteer. He shot this piece. It was edited with the help of I mean, I'm still Greg getting reading my book going, hey, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. And I go, wait a second, we could say that in Vietnam 40 years ago because no one knew what PTSD was. It was shell shock or something like that. But you guys have all this, but they're still saying that. Yeah. A lot of really important information there. And longtime BCTV producer Yada Klassen has put together a piece on uh, making syrup. It's entitled Boiling, uh, and it'll show uh, on this coming Friday on BCTV Channel 8. Besides using the thermometer, many old timers just use this. And they would just dip it into the syrup, bring it up, and if you hold it level, you can see as it drips off of here, this isn't quite syrup, but... There you go. All right. Uh, those two programs show right here on BCTV Channel 8, our uh, public channel, but we've got a government and education sister channel, Channel 10, which is jam-packed with local meetings, not only from Brattleboro, but with uh, meetings from the seven surrounding communities we serve, including Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. Get all of their select board meetings and a Leland and Gray school board meeting in there as well. All right. I can see the giant clock. You can't see it, but it's just off screen here, this big clock blinking at me, stressing me out, telling me I just can't talk anymore. As much as I love talking and uh, talking to all of you out there, I'll uh, sign off here, let you get back to your Tuesday. Remember, we'll be back Friday right here uh, at 5.45 p.m. on BCTV Channel 8 for another live broadcast. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Night, everybody.